Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 1st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Boston, Massachusetts. Today we actually had the rare treat to look at a targeted phishing attack that was directed at loan officers in financial companies. The Fish came thanks to Justin Trullo, a cybersecurity analyst from Loan Depot, who not only identified this fish, but also was able to retrieve a good part of the phishing kit, which is essentially the website being used to collect the credentials. What distinguishes uh, these targeted phishing attacks is that the emails being used here are specifically crafted for the respective industries. In this case, the email claimed to come from a title company and then enticed the victim into clicking on a link to download documents. The phishing website did emulate Box.com. Box.com, of course, being sort of one of those big enterprise file sharing sites, and it did allow the victim to log in using various other cloud services. And the goal here, in the end, was to obtain those respective credentials. Now, we don't, of course, know for sure what would have happened if one of the Loan Depot loan officers would have fallen for this particular fish, but typically the attacker will collect these credentials to then log in to the victim's email account and use it for business email compromise. For example, waiting for someone to ask for wire transfer instructions and then replying with a fake bank account. When you're installing software and hardware in your environment, it all too often does connect back to the particular vendor's network. Now, often this is just to check for updates, for example, but sometimes it also exfiltrates data about the network the system is installed in or the host it is installed on. Security company ExtraHop now released a report with a couple of case studies where enterprise software actually did exfiltrate data back to the vendor's network. And sometimes, well, uh, those connections ended up in somewhat suspicious locations. Of course, this is becoming more and more prevalent, in particular with a lot of software solutions that are now processing data in the cloud instead of on the endpoint. This has been an ongoing issue in particular with mobile devices, of course, where the endpoint processing power is somewhat limited and tools like, for example, predictive keyboards and such did exfiltrate keystrokes back to the cloud. But uh, now, according to ExtraHop, this particular behavior has also been seen in some enterprise software that is at least reporting statistics about its usage back to the vendor. Good defenses here, I think, should start probably when you evaluate the software to really be careful looking at the network traffic, trying to explain what network traffic is actually caused by a particular tool and why this network traffic exists. Also, things like this, of course, should be dis disclosed in any kind of uh, documentation or usage agreements that you're setting up for the particular software. And well, uh, yesterday I reported about uh, Google Chrome 76 being released and some of the security improvements that have been made in this particular version of Google Chrome, but appears that also one old behavior was actually reintroduced, even though in particular the security com community didn't really like it. And that's that Google Chrome will no longer display the www prefix for web services servers or the HTTPS protocol. So HTTPS www.sans.org will just be displayed as sans.org. This could of course confuse some users, also in some cases can make debugging more difficult if you're trying to communicate with a user whether or not a particular website is reachable. 
And if you have been in Europe, in particular in England recently, you may have noticed that a lot of people are using contactless payment cards. The way this works is that the credit card has an RFID loop built in. And if you're swiping the card above a terminal, money is automatically deducted without any further user interaction. This is of course somewhat dangerous because this sort of enables uh, unintentional payments as you walk past the terminal and the like but uh, the risk is somewhat limited by limiting these transactions to for example 30 pounds in the UK. Well researchers from Positive Technologies now figured out that these limits can actually be bypassed. What apparently happens is that when you're requesting more than the limit amount from a card, the card will essentially respond with rejecting that particular request. But by intercepting these responses and manipulating it, it is possible to actually trick the payment terminal into approving the payment even without any further user interaction. So no manipulation of the actual payment terminal or the card is required. This is an attack that could be launched essentially by adding a little overlay to the payment terminal. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.